When you lack motivation, you must remain disciplined. Hi, my name is Chelsea Ranieri. I'm in my second season with the Southwest Florida Sharks as their body weight specialist. I am someone who wants to help other people see that their success is based off of the ceilings they put on themselves and the foundation of their success is gratitude. And so no matter what you're doing in your life, whether you want to excel in your career or sport or with your family, my whole mission is to be a person and an advocate for those who are trying to excel in any area possible. Sports started for me when I was three. I'm very thankful my parents said this little girl is crazy and jumping around all over the place doing flips on the couch and so they blessed me with being a gymnast at age three, just recreational gymnastics, which then turned into competitive gymnastics and wanting to try their sports like, oh, let me try softball or baseball or soccer. And then I'm doing cartwheels and flips on the court, like running down, doing a cartwheel, trying to kick the soccer ball. And so I got to do gymnastics from age three all the way up until 22, where I went through many hardships like any athlete does, but ultimately got to reach my goal as being a division one athlete. So now I am a teacher, which is kind of funny because I was like, I don't want to be a teacher. I want to coach. I want to be more involved in the athlete. And then COVID hit and I had a bunch of high school gymnasts I was working with just saying, yeah, my teachers don't really care. I don't really care about my physical health. I don't really care about my mental health. And that just really struck a chord with me. And so, I had been coaching college gymnastics at the time at my alma mater, GW, and I made the decision to career switch. And so I, I took the exam, I passed the praxis, I got a provisional license, and now I get to teach high school physical health and education. So being a teacher, they say can be thankless, but I thank them every day for showing up. It's so funny, people ask me like, what do you do for fun? I'm like, this is fun. CrossFit is fun. Grid is fun. What else is supposed to be fun? But yeah, baking, singing, dancing, going to the beach, but really just being around a great community, like in CrossFit and in Grid, that's really what, you know, it fills my cup. It makes me feel good. When I was a college gymnast, part of your fitness test was memorizing and reciting this poem by Charles Swindle called Attitude. It's a very long poem, you had to get it word for word, nothing wrong, or else she would say, actually it was attitude, you added an S, please start over. And you're like, oh, so close. But freshman year, it's something you memorize, and then sophomore, junior, senior, it's something that you live by. And within that quote, there's a quote within the quote of life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so every day I try to live by that you could feel this way, you could feel self-doubt, you could feel like not doing it today. Everybody feels like they don't wanna do it, all the time. There are times I get, I'm like, oh man, I don't want to, but I get to. And I try to say that every day for myself so that I can be a good representation for my students and my athletes that I coach because you don't have to do anything. You get to do everything. Best friend makes these playlists. The best he beats one's the best. Obviously, because as in the name. Let's see what she got. It's on. So October of 2018, I did my first CrossFit class. And it was rowing with something else. I'd never sat on a rower. The coach at the time was um, Cameron Curry, who is now actually my my actual coach, so he coaches me through CrossFit and everything, and I'm, I'm so glad that Justin forced me to go. Um, we're doing rowing intervals, and he's like, hey, just go to 400. I said, okay, so I go to 400, everyone's still rowing, so I'm just sitting there like, looking around. He's like, what, are you okay? I said, well, you said to just go to 400. And he's like, oh, well, keep going, like, what are you doing? And then he realized that I was an athlete and like did some, you know, I did college gymnastics and I was pretty athletic, so. He like pushed me a little bit harder and helped me, you know, learn how to use the barbell because I didn't know how to do math at the time and I was a little afraid of it. Literally, I fell in love with Cameron because his coaching style was so much like my coaches that I had in gymnastics and it made me fall in love with the sport because then I knew, oh, people here have my back. 
I can get, I could get really good at this, but let's just not get ahead of ourselves. I don't want to compete or anything. Like, this will just be about fitness. Every time I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it, I just do it anyway. So that's when I hired Cameron as my coach. And I had been working with Think Tank and a couple different things and met so many amazing people in CrossFit along the way that I realized, OK, I want to still compete. I want to be competitive. And so I surrounded myself with a lot of positive influencers, which then eventually led me to GRID. Race! So someone I was dating at the time, their teammate, her name's Sammy Nally, switched to the Southwest Florida Sharks and said, hey, I know we don't really know each other, but I think you'd be amazing in GRID. You should try it. And so then I talked to Nick, who was the head coach at the time, and he was like, hey, you want to join? I was like, oh, I don't really know. He's like, OK, cool. Hangs up the phone. The next day, I get a call from him. He's like, hey, I just sent you your contract. Sign it. Like, this is, you don't have an option. Like, you're going to just do it. I didn't realize how much of a power hour style competition it would be. And so you may be in every race. You may only be in one or two. So if you're in the first race and then you're in the last race, how are you not only motivating your teammates to keep going, and giving your energy to them, but then how are you also making sure you're prepared to go as fast as you can before the next part? So it's like, how fast can you go? Competing, like actually being on the floor, I always run out, I'm like very into the anthem, I'm like swaying into it, but then as soon as that anthem's over, it's like lights are on, eyes are open, um, teeth are out, it's like let's sink our teeth in, let's get after it, and fins up all the way. And after every race, whether we won that race or we don't, I'm always like skipping or like jumping or dancing because that's when I know I'm in my element. If I'm doing too much or I'm trying to be too serious, that's when I overthink as an athlete. So I try to be as relaxed and as in that flow state as I can be. But being on this team, being able to say, yeah, I'm a shark and this person next to me also makes me better every day. I think that's the coolest part about it. I don't want any accolades of she was a D1 gymnast, she like went to the CrossFit Games, not yet, but it's like I don't I don't want any of those things listed. I I want people to see me as someone that they could go to for support whenever they needed it. Someone that brought positive energy and helped them realize that they can do a lot more than they think they can. And that it makes them want to be a kinder person because they got to know me. That's what I want to be remembered by.